Hey guys, it's Thursday the 21st, and we're going to do chapter um, 11 today. We're just going to do one chapter today. Let me just make sure, yeah, we're just going to do one chapter today. So let's go ahead and ask the Lord to bless our time. Lord, we come before you and ask that you'll bless our reading today. Help it to um, affect us, help us to think about it, and help us help it to change our lives. We, um, we just love you, God, and we pray this in your name. Amen. All right, here's our verse, 1 John 5, 12. Listen up. Whoever has a son has life. Whoever does not have a son of God does not have life. Good, let's do it one more time. Good. Let's move on. We are on Lesson 7 today, and we're going to read Chapter 11. We're going to come up with the key events and setting, proverb lesson, summary, and responses to challenges, and scripture connections. There are, oh, wait a second. Yeah, it says Chapter 12 here, but we're not doing that today. We're just doing 11. So first, excuse me, is atheist. He's a false pilgrim who doesn't believe God exists. He's an enemy of Christ. Flatterer represents Satan. He pretends to agree with everything Christians say. And uh, a flatterer is someone who tells you what you want to hear and makes you feel good and they're lying about it. Great grace is one of the king's champions. By his grace, God has given some Christians greater faith. King's champions represent strong Christians with great faith who also have scars and wounds from their battles against Satan and his evil forces. Little faith is someone who doesn't have saving faith in Jesus. Um, he's not alert and watchful. He loses his strength and courage. No faith is someone who's willing to sell everything he has to Satan and even his own soul because he loves his sin more than he loves the king. Pilgrims in a net represents the consequences God's people suffer when they sin. You get trapped in error and pride, just like getting caught in a net. Robbers named fate heart, faint heart, mistrust, and guilt represents the inward struggles faced by Christians who must look to the king for faith and deliverance. All right, let's move forward to um, today. We're about right here and we're about to enter the celestial city. We just have two more chapters after today. This is chapter 11, Little Faith and the Flatterer. As they walked, Christian told hopeful a story. Once a man named, called Little Faith was on the narrow way and fell asleep. Three robbers named Faint Heart, Mistrust, and Guilt came up and with threatening words ordered him to get up. Afraid, Little Faith didn't have the strength to fight or run away. The robbers grabbed his money and beat him with a large club. The robbers heard someone coming. Scared it might be great grace, they ran away. Little Faith finally continued on the narrow way. Hopeful asked, did the robbers take all he had? Christian replied, no, they didn't find his jewels, but they got his spending money. After that, he had to beg for food as he went, just to stay alive. I was told that he complained all the time about what had happened to him. Christian sighed. At least he was different from a man named No Faith, Christian went on. No Faith was someone like Esau who sold his birthright to Jacob. No Faith was willing to sell his soul to the evil prince. When he wanted something, he could do anything in the world to get it. People without faith are like that. They sell everything, including their own lives, so they can do sinful things. So there is a difference between no faith and little faith, Christian continued. No faith had no faith at all. On the other hand, little faith had saving faith in the king, and so even though his faith was small, he could not sell his soul or his jewels. Hopeful asked, well, why didn't little faith have more courage to fight against the robbers? Christian replied, if you had been in the same situation, you might not have done well either. I've been in this sort of battle. It was terrible. I had my armor on, but I still had a hard time. No one knows how tough the fight is unless he's been in the battle himself. Why did the robbers run away when Great Grace was close by? Hopeful wanted to know. Christian replied, Great Grace is the king's champion, and he's able to win against robbers like these. There's a difference between the king's champions and little faith. 
They are all pilgrims, but not all pilgrims are the king's champions. Some pilgrims are strong, and some are weak. Some have great faith, some have only a little. But even great grace and the king's champions like David, Peter, and Paul have scars and wounds from their battles against robbers and the evil prince. You may remember that Peter boasted he would never deny Jesus, but when Jesus was arrested, that's what Peter did. Satan and his robbers are strong enemies, Christian warned. Let's not think we can do better than others when we hear they have been defeated. Hopeful, we must remember two important things. One, go out with our armor strapped on. Above all, we must take the shield of faith. Two, we must remember that the king goes with us in his desire and desire his presence more than anything else. As for me, Christian said thoughtfully, only by God's goodness am I alive today. I can't boast that I won because of my strength. And I don't think we're out of danger yet, he went on, looking around. I pray that God will deliver us from the next enemy we might meet. As they continued the journey, ignorance followed some distance behind. They came to a fork in the road. The two paths ahead appeared to be straight and narrow. Christian and Hopeful didn't know which to take. A man in a very light robe appeared. Where are you going? he asked. To the celestial city, said Christian, but we're not sure which is the right road. Follow me, said the man. I'm going there too. So they followed him and found him very agreeable as they talked together. He led them step by step, and in time they came to a bend in the road. It curved away from the celestial city, and before they knew what was happening, the men led them straight right into a horrible neck. Just then the shiny robe fell off his back, and there stood the enemy of the king. Christian and Hopeful lay there weeping, for they were trapped in the net through their own wrong choice. We were wrong to follow him, cried Christian. Didn't the shepherds warn us about the flatterer, someone who would tell us what we wanted to hear and agree with everything we said just to get us to do what he wanted? Yes, said Hopeful sadly. Besides, we forgot to read the directions the shepherd gave, shepherds gave us. A shining one came toward them. They told him about the evil man and what happened. It's the flatterer, the shining one explained. He's the wicked prince. He transforms himself into an angel of light so he can tempt pilgrims to leave the narrow way. The shining one cut open the net and freed Christian and Hopeful. Then he disciplined them for their foolishness like a good father does to a disobedient son or daughter. I correct those I love, the shining one said, so be alert and repent. Then he sent them on the right path instructing them to pay attention to the shepherd's map and directions. The pilgrims thanked him and went on their way singing. They soon met another man named Atheist. By the way, A means not. Theist means about God. So an atheist doesn't believe God is the correct way or real. Hopeful whispered to Christian, let's be careful because he might be a flatterer too. Atheist asked, where are you going? When they told him, Atheus laughed loudly. You are ignorant to go on such a difficult journey, he said. There's no king and no such place as the celestial city. We've both heard and believe there's such a place. We believe God, the truth of God's word, and we walk by faith in Jesus, the pilgrim said firmly. Then Christian whispered to Hopeful, Is what this man, is what this man saying true? No warned Hopeful. He is one of the flatterers we were warned about. Remember what it cost us the last time we listened to someone like him? Besides, we saw the celestial city when we were standing on delectable mountains. So the pilgrims turned away from atheist and continued on the narrow path. All right, you're going to complete your exit ticket, all these pieces, and submit it. Have a great night, guys. I'll see you tomorrow on Friday. Friday. <laughs>